1861. In the first fateful year of the Civil War, Union survival rests on the improbable partnership of two men. President in the nation's severest test, Abraham Lincoln is an unlikely leader. A self-taught prairie lawyer whose clothes seldom fit. He's been called a clown, a gorilla, a scarecrow in a corn patch. It also has been said that he is suited for only one role in life, the presidency. A gentleman to the manor born, General George Bretton McClellan, is the son of a patrician family, a West Point graduate and classical scholar, reputedly the best educated man in the United States Army. At 34, princely, brilliant, and valorous, he has been chosen by Lincoln to command the nation's first fighting force, the Army of the Potomac. Joined in defending the Union, the President and his general are tragic adversaries on the question of slavery. Their fateful duel of wills can only be resolved in the coming trial by fire. November 6, 1860. Today, in a mounting national crisis, citizens of 33 states have gone to the polls. Hour by hour, returns show a Republican tide across the North. Now, in a small telegraph office at Springfield, Illinois, campaign officials impatiently await word from New York. If it follows the trend, Abraham Lincoln will be the next president of the United States. In a nation torn by slavery, he may also be the last. In the cotton states, Lincoln's election triggers furious reaction. To Lincoln, to all enemies of slavery, the South makes a stinging reply. The Union be damned. In January 1861, Jefferson Davis leads the Southern Exodus from the United States Senate. In Charleston Harbor, South Carolina, under threat of Confederate attack, Major Robert Anderson braces Fort Sumter for whatever may come. Eager to punish the rebels, Northern election volunteers begin to march to a more ominous cadence. Thus, hardly believing it would happen, Americans prepared to kill each other. 600,000 men would die, some to preserve the Union, some to secede from it. Above all, the war would be a struggle of conscience over human slavery in a nation where four million Americans could be bought and sold. The South was ready to risk all to keep it. The North was divided by doubts. Freed, would the black then be a citizen equal before God and the Constitution? Even Lincoln feared the consequences of sudden emancipation, tried to delay decision. Yet in the smoke of a hundred battles, great and small, the decision would become inescapable, beyond the control even of the president himself. <laughs> 